Hey there, Internet! The DIY is the poorly produced live web series where I hang out with people as overly consumed by music as I am. For episode two, I'm going to sit here with Liz and Chris and take a deep dive into a little genre called oh, country. And we're going to start off with a question for both of you all. Uh, what song would you play while you ran up the stairs if you were making a film soundtrack? Like, you know, Rocky style. What would that song be? Probably something like Roxy Music, something that, like, gets your blood pumping. Yeah, like, yeah, I can see oh, that. Oh, Love is a Drug would be a good one, I think, because, you know, it has a good rhythm to it, yeah. Okay. What about you, Chris? For me, um, yeah, I am I'm a, uh, addicted to metal, so um, for <laughs> me it would probably be the opening track from uh, Amon Amarth's uh, with Odin on our side. It's uh, Valhalla Waits. If, if that doesn't get you off your seat and running somewhere, then you're probably already a corpse. Uh, what is your favorite electronica album, or a favorite electronica album, and explain why in three words or less? Um, I've really gotten into Grimes lately. That's really been my thing right now, because she just has so many layers of sound, and she uses so many different cultures of music and just blends them all together, and it's it's pretty cool. I really like it. Awesome. I really like Visions. It's a great album. You used uh, more than three words, so I'm going to have to give your points to Chris. I'm sorry. But... But uh, Sweet, I didn't know we were playing Whose Line Is It Anyway. <laughs> we are going to take our deep dive now uh, into alt country. So the starting question for the discussion is, what is alt country? Yeah, we really kind of struggled to pin it down, which is not a bad thing. Um, you know, I come from Tennessee. I started going to concerts, um, like, I don't know, junior year of high school, um, and kind of breaking out from the shroud of country music that, you know, just kind of predominates through Tennessee, and I was trying to look for something similar, because I liked the feel of country music, but all the radio country and all that stuff just really annoyed me. And eventually just kind of found this, you know, subgenre of alt country that is humongous. One thing that I've always said is there are two genres of music that I hate, country and polka. I've recently found that I've, I've completely dropped country from those, so it's just polka. <laughs> and even though, like, I don't know, I, I like They Might Be Giants, so I might be turning around on that one. So yeah, we kind of came up with um, this definition. It's a form of country that incorporates other genre elements. Um, it, it's very closely related to the indie aesthetic. Um, it's non-polished, it has some soul, it has some raw emotion, it has some heavy, you know, some rock elements. Um, and it's... it. It kind of fosters this counterculture and thrives on that counterculture and the idea of being an independent, um, you know, kind of rebelling against the inside culture. As opposed to like, you know, old school mainstream country or like new school mainstream co uh, country. Yeah, there's some really bad country stuff out there today, but alt country makes it a point to move away from that. To me, I think it's more heartbreaking. It's it strikes a different chord. It's like the punk rock of country in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. It has a lot to do with um, you know yeah the DIY uh, aesthetic, earnestness. And for me, the two big things are there's this country songwriting that's really important to the genre for me, um, and there's an emotionality that's really important. When I think of like Godfathers of the genre, I think Towns Van Zant, mm -hmm. which is might be the one of the most depressing singer songwriters of all time. <laughs> So for me, it's all it's all about that emotion, the the real emotionality that has gotten lost with modern country. You know, right. where it's kind of like we're telling the story, but it's a pop song. It's no longer there's no blues in there anymore, uh, but there right. is in alt country for sure. Yeah, and I you know I thought it was really interesting when we were kind of doing some research for the show. We're like, okay, no depression. You know, we know Uncle Tupelo. That's their debut album. Mm -hmm. um, where did, okay, but this, we know this is an old kind of gospel song, and the Carter family was the first one to, I guess, record it. To think that the Carter family in the late 30s could influence the genre today is just, it's kind of mind-boggling, and it's yeah. really cool, I think. Just, it's awesome. I wish that there were more efforts to kind of catalog where it came from. Well, and then, um, you know, Alan Lomax, the, um, the historian who traveled around the country kind of collecting samples of music. His A lot of his archives went, went online this year. You can go back as far as that. And so we were really talking about how like the Scotch-Irish immigrant tradition, you can really trace it back to that far. What are a, a couple, maybe four or five uh, essential albums or bands? I mean, I definitely think we got to start with Uncle Tupelo. So I have the notification. Sure. There we go. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we can see that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Jeff Tweedy, um, you know um, Jay Farah, their early band from uh, Belleville, Illinois. Um, they were college kids, you know, and so they they kind of started this moving train. The early '90s all country kind of explosion because they are kind of the center point of the more recent genre, I'd say. If you want to go back to some of the, the godfathers, as you said, of the genre, Graham Parsons, I mean, definitely really For essential. Sure, yeah. yeah. And, you know, he was part of the Flying Burrito Brothers, but he was so young. Um, I mean, he died in his late 20s, um, and he, he had already produced all this music. And he, of course, is associated with Emmylou Harris. Um, he was around when the Stones were recording Exile on Main Street. So you kind of get a sense of all these kind of bleeding edges that kind of start... Influencing each other. American Beauty by the Dead. The, the, the definition that we gave, uh, you know, alt country, you know, it's outsider culture. It, it incorporates other, you know, musical traditions. You know, the subject matter is outside the norm. Like you've got just classic ones like um, Friend of the Devil. Um, I think mm-hmm. Ripple's on there too. I mean, just some really good, like, Americana roots music. And I mean, I think that that kind of, that would be my way, way back album. Another one would be uh, the Blacks, self-titled, out of Chicago. They're on Bloodshot. I would also say Whiskey Town, obviously, mm-hmm, right on the first band. Yeah. Um, you know, the Carolina kind of driving force of the genre. Uh, Dave Rollins and Gillian Welsh, because they mm. are kind of the parents, the modern parents, I would say, of the genre. Pretty much anything that uh, Drive-By Truckers has released, it's all good. I know we, we still kind of rambled through a bunch of people, but to me, Whiskey Town and Uncle Tupelo were... Just the moments where, you know, like, I saw the light, I guess you could say. We were talking about this a little bit before before we started. Folk rock is a really, really big thing now. There's the whole cow punk movement. So you have, like, Mumford and Sons, which they're, like, using bluegrass instruments, but I don't really know what to call that music. Um, I don't personally like yeah. it very much. How much of it is self-applied, do you think? And um, what's sort of the radar for trying to decipher, is this alt country or is it not? Labels are like nicknames. You can't give it to yourself, otherwise it doesn't count. Yeah, this is something I struggled with when I was writing music reviews. You know, I was always really hesitant to pigeonhole something um, into a genre. And I just, I didn't really like doing that. Um, But All Country, I think, is one of those, like, let's take the Drive-By Truckers, for example. They could easily be um, seen as alt-rock because, you know, they have the three acts attack. But they also have the songwriting um, themes and things are usually associated with alt country. You know, the storytelling, the really well crafted just images um, and emotion. Um, so I think most bands who are alt country kind of straddle a couple of genres. I mean, even with Uncle Tupelo, I don't, I doubt that they consider themselves alt country. I mean, they were admittedly a punk rock band that started playing country music because nobody would go to their shows. So you know, I mean, it just kind of was almost by accident, sort of by design. But I don't think that. Mm-hmm. You know, when they were in the moment, they had this idea like, yeah, we're making something completely new. Yeah, and you think about, you know, the early 90s when these bands were emerging, you also had the alt-rock movement, you know, the college rock movement. So I guess alt was kind of the thing to do, you know, to stick it to the man, to kind of subvert the major labels. Yeah, popular music wasn't furnishing people with what they actually wanted to hear and something that connected with them, so they went out and did it themselves. And a, a, a genre, I think, is, you know, critically applied a way of, you know, discussing music, but the, the these genres that are, that are coming up and they might use some acoustic guitar and they might use a little bit of uh, a country or folk sound, um, I, I don't think they always have the ethos in, in that songwriting. And for me, that's kind of where the fuzzy line is, uh, like you were saying with Drive By Truckers. Like, the, the, what they're singing about is... is often a very real version of country that's uh, you know would be hard to find in the mainstream now. Well, I, I do have to address, uh, you'd mentioned uh, Mumford & Sons. Liz asked me very kindly not to swear on here, so I won't. You get one word, one swear word. How can you sum up Mumford & Sons in one swear word? One I'm... swear word. Fuck you, Mumford. That's it. Sorry, if you need to bleep that, go for it. <laughs> we, we are running out of time. We put together a Spotify playlist that will be uh, above the comment section. Uh, right now it's about a two-hour list of a lot of the uh, bands we've been bringing up. I do want to shout out real quick the 
you know, the, the new Nico Case album. So if you want an album that came out in the last year that was a phenomenal all-country album, I would say that one. Um, it's a little more personal for her, and I really like that. Yeah, um, I think it's more mature than her previous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and her previous stuff is definitely part of that Chicago Bloodshot Records um, all-country. And it's definitely more all-country, yeah. Now she's kind of more of a fusion between, like, jazz and folk, I guess. Uh, we're going to do something real quick called Stuck in Your Head. And that's uh, just where I want to know something about music you've been thinking about or a new album you're really digging or an old album you're re-digging. I've been on this humongous Fugazi kick and I think it has to do yes. with <laughs> I think it had to do with going through finals week here at Purdue um, and just like winter, you know, the crappy dead feeling of winter. And so Fugazi really kind of pushed me through that. To the uh, dismay of my neighbors, I've been cranking Ghostland Observatory a lot lately. <laughs> um <laughs> It's kind of a nice uh, amalgamation of like some really gross, dirty electronica and some you know, really heavy riffs. Well, uh, thank you to my super awesome guests, Chris and Liz, for coming on the show. We're going to have uh, links galore to everything we mentioned today and uh, that uh, Spotify playlist. And you'll be able to click around here somewhere once we're on YouTube uh, to find the Chicago Audio Collective if you uh, um, need any equipment repair of any sort. Um, and... Uh, you'll also be able to subscribe to this channel or uh, follow me at keys underscore says on Twitter. So uh, until next time, this has been uh, the DIY chat show. So say goodbye, Internet. Adios. Thanks, Bye, guys. Internet. <laughs> <laughs>